Hey guys, welcome to the Chevy Volt vlog. It's been quite a bit of time since I made a video for the Chevy Volt. Today we'll go over how to replace your 2016-2020 Chevy Volt's spark plugs. So if you haven't already, please like, subscribe to the Sony W channel for more Chevy Volt vlog as well as other fun product reviews. Of course, hit the bell button and of course leave some comments below if you have any of the Chevy Volt and stuff like that too. Anyways, lots of maintenance videos on my on my um, Sony W channel. But for the Chevy Volt, I have an entire series of videos for it. Now, here is the Iridium spark plugs you will need. There is the model number I've also listed in the links below, as well as a, um, I got this off of Amazon, as well as some of the tools and parts I also have on Amazon. So I have it linked in Amazon as well. So anyways, you can also get this at your local parts store or anywhere else. You'll need a 14 millimeter spark plug uh, socket so that's very special I never had a 14 millimeter that's really really thin um, most of my other ones are 5 8 or or some other size that's been pretty standard and this is the first time I actually need a 14 millimeter you also need a torque wrench set at about 18 pounds so normally I think Chevy um, requires 18 pounds for their spark plugs I think Honda was like 16 pounds so you might want to look at the uh, manual and make sure you double check that for the Chevy Volt um, I think it was 18 pounds. So yeah, double check and make sure you, you put the right poundage because you don't want to over tighten those things and break the seals or break the, um, the spark plug. They're quite delicate. Anyways, you need an extender too. You probably need an eight inch extender with the, and also a, uh, the torque wrench, also some basic tools like a 10 millimeter socket wrench and also some, a bit kit, a bit kit meaning like, um, like a torque star those kits because basically to unlock that one bolt for your engine cover you need a i think a star 23 size bit but yeah it's really helpful to you know have some basic tools and a you know of course a 100 bit kit set so that if there's any type of bits you can actually get to it you need it if you're working on your car it's, it's one of those things that's a bare essential again those kits only cost like about 10 bucks or so and like a socket wrench set, probably 10 or 20 bucks, you know, get at Costco or online or whatever. Again, you know, that gap, the oil cap, you have to remove the oil cap to remove that engine cover. So you have to replace it later. So take off the boat, take off the oil cap, go ahead and pull straight up. You might want to wiggle a little because it's pegged by two pegs um, onto the engine. So to keep it simple, that's really what you need to do. Then it exposes the uh, coil packs to the spark plugs. There's insulation stuff. I realized that, you know, the coil packs are individually coiled, unlike the first gen, which was an entire row, which was dangerous. Just if you put it at the wrong side, it might crack it. Now, as you can see, there's little orange tabs. Those little orange tabs are locked to lock in that, uh, the wiring to the coil packs. You're going to have to um, unlock them by using your thumb. And, you know, there's a little, it, it's like a little switch. You basically switch it up or down to unlock it and then, um, and then basically you could pull the wiggle the little um, wire off of the coil pack. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and get a 10 millimeter uh, socket and basically unlock or basically unbolt all of these coil packs and loosen them up and just basically pull it out by hand. Pretty straightforward. Like I said, this whole process takes about 20 minutes maybe, um, 20 or 30 minutes. It took me longer to set up the stuff to and camera and stuff than actually to do this job. Um, so at, if you brought it to a dealership, it's probably like 150 bucks to do this. Um, for me, it cost about for the spark plugs. It was roughly around, I think eight or $9 for each spark plug or was it? No, I think it was like six or eight. Uh, I believe it in the description. It's roughly around six to $8 per spark plug. This is very different from that of, um, when I replaced my Honda spark plugs, which are $12 a piece. So that's pretty good. Chevy made a really inexpensive Iridium spark plug. So thank you, AC Delco, for making an affordable spark plug. That's Iridium. Anyways, so to take out the coil packs, you're gonna go ahead and pull straight up. Now these coil packs are angled, which is pretty messed up. Um, at first I thought I needed an angle um, um, socket tool to get to them, but actually you really don't. The whole engine is at an angle, so you could basically put a straight um, extender pipe, extender in there and basically just pull, pull the socket out. Anywho, or the, the spark plug out. 
So these coil packs are angled. They take a little, um, it does pull kind of straight up at a slight angle, but just pull, if you wiggle it enough, there's a lot of suction. So that's what's keeping it in. As you can see, it's very clean. Also, you can see the, if you pause the video, you can actually see those locking, orange locking caps on the wiring. So all four of them, they go at roughly a little bit of an angle, but with a little slight wiggle and pull straight up, they, they, they count pretty well. Now you go get your um, spark plug tool out and go ahead and slide it in. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use my torque wrench to basically uh, unseat it. So it's only about eight, it's only 18 pounds from the factory. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch the uh, torque wrench into the other drive mode and do a lefty loosey counterclockwise to remove the uh, spark plug. After, you know, uh, unlocking the spark plug, I'm basically just going to use it by hand and slowly pull it and, and thread it out. Uh, you don't want to overdo anything. And, you know, to be honest, you know, do it work nice and slow. It, it takes, like, let's say it takes 30 minutes. It's not a big deal. It's very, very simple. Like I said, I did this before for my other Hondas. We based up our Hondas. We were usually replaced at, again, 100,000 miles. If you can see this, I have actually an angle because I thought it needed an angle one, but it really doesn't. And the spark plug itself looks very, very clean. That's probably only about 50,000 miles of use with the engine. But am I gonna replace it? Yes, I am because I bought the spark plugs already. So why not? Um, I could probably just, I'll put those into storage in case I need them again and put them back in the box. But they only have roughly probably 50,000 miles of gas use on the ice, on the internal combustion engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace it. So. Yeah, like I said, it didn't cost me that much for the spark plugs. I already got them. I'm not going to pay for shipping again or anything else like that. So, and I already spent the time and money to buy the tool and the spark plugs. So I'm going to go ahead and replace it. We're right here. So you're going to go ahead and I'm what I do is I basically do it one by one. So I basically take one spark plug out, put the new one in. And basically, don't, I don't torque anything yet. I just basically, you know, thread it in so that no dust falls into the engine, into the uh, spark plug holes. Um, as well as it's more methodical, methodical this way because I'm basically doing it one by one and I'm checking uh, the quality of it, of if there's any um, fouling or any other stuff with the spark plug. Um, usually in the past, my cars before Iridium, uh, spark plugs, they basically have, you have to check it every, pretty much every 30 to 60,000 miles for spark plugs. So nowadays it's like 100,000 miles or or 80,000 miles, or even 60,000 miles for the lower grade ones. But, you know, to be honest, I do it one by one. This is how I do it. I know people basically just do it one way. They, they spend all the time just um, removing it, then putting them on. Sure, that's more efficient. I think that's more efficient too. But to be honest, I'm working outside where dust and leaves could blow in or, or anything else, so I don't want that chance. The last one on the last uh, spark plug, it's actually at an angle too, which is interesting it still fits the tool fine for the extender extension um but it was kind of i was wondering if it needed something else for it but nope just straight on you know, extender and as you can see i put all my um coil packs in a row so i know which one's which so when i do check for any um, erosion or springs i just keep them in place so i know which one you replace i also put that in my records of the spark plugs that are replaced and if I've seen any filing or stuff. I've heard some people say that some of these things, these coil packs actually go bad. Um, so have not, knock on wood, replaced, you know, seen that yet. I have got any error codes yet, but if they do, I know how to replace coil packs if you need to. So there's a DIY on how to pull out a coil pack if in case you need to know how to do that. So I basically use a quick damp, no, I didn't use a damp towel. I use a dry towel, a shop towel to basically clean any dust off of it before I replace it back in. It goes straight down, just work slowly and you know push it all the way down so that it seats correctly. Then ha do it all by hand and of course uh, put in the um, 10 millimeter bolt back in and of course thread that in by hand as well. I thread everything in by hand before I torque it down. So. The spark plugs are back in, they're torqued at 18 pounds. This is actually roughly around, um, I I didn't torque it, I basically just used by, did it by hand. Roughly it's around probably 15 pounds or so. I'm, I'm thinking not necessarily even 15, it's probably like 10 to 15 pounds. I just made sure it was tight, to be honest. 
it wasn't, you know, to be honest, it's only a 10 millimeter boat. I'm not gonna, you know, you know, I could use a torque wrench on it and set it to like, like 10 or 12 pounds. Typically that's what it is for like a Honda. So I, I usually just basically tighten it by hand. So anyways, time to plug everything back in. So you plug in the wires back in place. All the, um, some people actually mark it so you don't mix up the coil packs. I actually just place the coil packs on the floor so I know which one goes into where so I don't mix those up. So cleaning up, I'm gonna put everything back in. Uh, just double check all the connections and I'm gonna go ahead and start the car and try it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave the engine cover off for now. So I, as I check out the car, I don't have to worry about it. Um, I am doing my final inspection right now. I think I actually put in, um, yeah, okay. Anywho, so start the car up. And as you can see, it's 85,000 miles. Of course, this is, you should probably change it 100,000. Go ahead and power it up. There shouldn't be any error codes that pop up. You want to probably take this out on a quick drive. But what I did was I left it on running for about probably with the hood open, it would use the engine, the uh, internal combustion engine. I just left it on for about probably five, 10 minutes. Let it charge by itself, put it into mountain mode. Um, by putting it into mountain mode, the engine will go on. But if you leave the hood open, the engine will go on as well. So I just left it running for about a good 10 minutes and made sure no codes pop. And then I did a road test and make sure no other codes popped. If it was, then you might want to check the connections again. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell button. Of course, thank you to all 10,000 plus subscribers to the Stern W channel, as well as the Chevy Volt vlog. So, of course, you know I have two cars. There is the Chevy Volt and the Honda Clarity. I do maintenance on both, as well as do other reviews and product reviews and stuff. So check out the other videos. Search the Sterling W channel for any other stuff, as well as look at the, all the fun review videos I do. I think that's very popular right now. And also the unboxing and review videos. So thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.